About 2,000 children go missing every year in DC. I was just in a Safeway and this lady walked up to me and said, can you please take this flyer? If you go to the DC Police Department's Twitter page, you'll notice a ton of posts about people who've gone missing and that the majority of those people are minorities. Now, to be fully transparent, yes, it is true that 2,000 children go missing every year in DC. However, about 90% of those cases end up being labeled as closed, as we can see on this chart here provided by missing.dc.gov, and most of that 90% is runaways that was later spotted and found. However, just because someone is a runaway that was later found, that doesn't mean that they was not subjected to some sort of like horrific abuse or taken advantage of during that juncture when they ran away. And also, a closed case doesn't always translate into a successful case. If a missing person is found dead, then that missing person's case is closed, but then it just gets transferred to the homicide division. So don't be fooled by the word closed and become dismissive of the fact that about 2,000 children go missing every year in DC. Sadly, here is a case in DC where a young lady was reported missing, but was later found. However, the things that happened during her disappearance was diabolical and horrific. Now this next story we do have to warn you is a bit disturbing for some. A local 16 year old girl who went missing was allegedly raped. The uncle asked that we only identify him as Mr. Davis. Uh, he spoke with us. He's asking anyone with information to contact police, but his interview is not easy to hear. I mean, they took her in the back of a building like this in broad daylight between 2, between 2, 2.30 and 3 o'clock, and they raped her. Now, can you imagine how she's screaming and hollering and fighting these two individuals after one finished, then the other ones did it. And this went on, and then they just dumped her like she was a, a, a bag of trash. You know, I really don't think that the average person on the street knows how monumental child sex trafficking is. Sex trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry and its participants are not just the perverts up the street by the alley. No, sometimes those guys are just the scouts for the larger fish. You know, this thing goes deep, like really deep. And if you're familiar with the uh, Jeffrey Epstein case, then you know that allegedly figures as important as US presidents are implicated in this underworld. The stats that they gave that uh, 20 plus million child pornography pictures were uploaded on the internet the last year, a 5,000% increase in the last five years. The idea where they said every year 2 million kids go into trafficking, going into being sold in the black market, and then stats about how you can sell cocaine one time, where you can sell the same child five to 10 times a day for 10 years is what you can do and it's a hundred and fifty billion dollar a year industry now what i want to do for the remainder of this video is to touch on the dark psychology of child traffickers and how to recognize them based on these behavioral traits now please be advised that not everyone that displays some of these behavioral traits are child traffickers i just want to get that disclaimer out of the way every night i go to bed before this probably gonna be the keys on my mind why are we just finding out Child trafficking is a global criminal enterprise that involves abduction, recruitment, transportation, harboring, or receipt of children for various exploitative purposes, including sexual exploitation, forced labor, and organ trafficking. A lot of people don't talk about that organ trafficking, but it's real. To effectively combat child trafficking, it is essential to understand the psychology of the traffickers involved. This video seeks to explore the dark psychology of child traffickers, shedding light on their motivations, behaviors, and tactics. Now, let's start with the psychology of child traffickers. Number one, psychopathy and antisocial traits. Child traffickers often exhibit psychopathic and antisocial traits, which enable them to manipulate deceive and exploit their victims. These individuals may lack empathy and remorse, allowing them to rationalize their actions and view children as commodities. Number two, vulnerability assessment. Child traffickers are skilled at identifying and exploiting vulnerabilities in their victims. They carefully assess potential targets, looking for individuals who are marginalized, impoverished, or 
just lacking social support systems. Uh, this assessment helps traffickers identify children who are less likely to report their exploitation. Number three, grooming and manipulation. Traffickers use grooming techniques to build trust and dependency in their victims. They may, uh, they may offer gifts, affection, or false promises of a better life to establish control over children. This manipulation is intended to keep victims compliant and fearful of reporting their situations. Next, let's move on to motivations behind child trafficking. Number one, financial gain. What is the business model of human trafficking that's attracting so many people to want to go do it? Profits. This is strictly a money play. The misconception is that all human traffickers are men, and that is not the case. Many human traffickers are women. Financial gain is a significant motivation for child traffickers. The exploitation of children in various industries, such as the sex trade and forced labor, generates substantial profits. Traffickers are driven by the prospects of financial gain and view children as commodities to be exploited for maximum profit. Remember, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Number two, power and control. Child traffickers often derive a sense of power and control from their ability to manipulate and exploit vulnerable children. This power dynamic satisfies their psychological needs for dominance and the authority over others. Number three, social and cultural factors. In some cases, social and cultural factors contribute to child trafficking. Norms and practices that devalue children's rights and perpetuate discrimination can create an environment where trafficking is more likely to occur. Okay, now let's move over to tactics employed by child traffickers. Traffickers often tell women and girls that they're beautiful, and what they do is they will actually scope out places where women and girls will often hang out. They will go to malls, school playgrounds, and the movie theater, and they'll approach these potential victims and tell them, you're beautiful, and see how they respond. If the woman or girl responds with a lot of confidence and seems unfazed, they move on. But if she seems uncomfortable with the compliment, if she looks down and can't make eye contact, or if she says, no, I'm not beautiful, then they know that this is someone who they then can manipulate and use as a potential victim. Number one, deception. Child traffickers frequently employ deception to lure victims into their schemes. They may promise false job opportunities, education, or marriage prospects to gain a child's trust. Number two, coercion and threats. Traffickers may use physical violence, threats to the victim's family, or other forms of coercion to maintain control over their victims. Fear of reprisal often keeps children trapped in exploitative situations. Number three, isolation. Isolating victims from their support networks, including family and friends, is a common tactic. This isolation makes it more difficult for children to seek help or escape. I just want to end with this, and this is just my personal opinion and my personal philosophy. The world is an extremely dark place. I encounter so many people that are oblivious to the fact that the darkness of this world is so much more massive than the light. The way that I look at the light of this world is something that shines in our eyes and blinds us to what's beneath. Because what's beneath is this behemoth of a truth that we all refuse to acknowledge. Why do I say this? Well, if you actually look at the world, and I mean really, really look at the world, ask yourself, why does crime generate more money than the GDP of entire countries? And that's just the crime that is actually able to be counted and recorded. There's probably billions and billions of more that goes undetected. According to the University of Chicago, the estimated cost of crime is a staggering $4.7 to $5.8 trillion annually. That's equivalent to, or in some case more than, the GDP of some developed nations. Now, ask yourself, in order for crime to exceed the dollar amount of the entire GDP of most countries, how many people around the world does it take to actually reach those numbers? I mean, no one knows exactly how many criminals there are in the world, but based on these dollar figures, I would say that the world is a pretty dark place and the participants of the underworld is a staggering majority. Now, that's just my opinion. So why am I pointing this out? Because I think it's very important that we stop living in oblivion and start living with vigilance. Even though we wish for a perfect world, 
doesn't mean that we live in a perfect world. Sadly, we have to watch everyone with a degree of skepticism and teach our kids about the dangers of this world. I think that if we actually inform our kids about the dangers rather than shielding them from the knowledge, then that's one step towards preventing things like child trafficking. Yes, it's a small, tiny step, but it's a step because knowledge is power.